trying to first quickly respond to the uh, previous uh, presentation, which I think uh, brought some very interesting topics uh, to the table. Um, some some first quick ideas that came up during during the presentation. Uh, I think um, it's very interesting to see the exact requirements in terms of um, data depositing with repositories that are required from, uh, say, the, the LLD uh, community. Uh, I noted down um, making sure that there is uh, uncompressed uh, data available, for instance, in turtle format, and that the media types are correct. Uh, what I think would be very useful, actually, would be to cross-check against our list of um, Clarin uh, depositing services, trying to see which ones of those would qualify to get a kind of I don't know, a star rating for uh, LLD compatibility. Uh, which of those um, repositories do support this, either out of the box or maybe after some discussion with the repository owner? Because that would allow for uh, instantiation of a simple list of for recommended platforms to basically provide your um, LLD um, uh, resources uh, to. That's the first one. Um, then, um, um, some, some additional thoughts, um, specifically about uh, resolvability of the, um, uh, of the, the uh, concepts. Um, I think there we might also be able to provide some help in, um, say, keeping the consistency of the linked uh, data clouds um, in an optimal shape, since we have uh, something that we're currently also working on called uh, the curation module, together with the colleagues from uh, from uh, uh, Vienna, for instance. Um, and part of this curation module is a link checker. And I could imagine that uh, making sure that, um, say, the uh, your eyes that you are referring to are actually resolvable without any problems, uh, having a good overview of that and a monitoring system of that would, uh, would make a lot of sense. And it would typically also be something, I think, on which we can pool resources because you would only need to do those checks on a regular interval, but by one instance, so that you don't individually need to do uh, those, uh, those kind of checks. Um, similarly, I think for the requirement of having correct media types advertised, uh, we're currently also looking into doing all kinds of checks for making sure that content negotiation is available with correct media types at certain endpoints. Um, might be useful to, to uh, think along about uh, setting up a kind of common mechanism of, of monitoring this. Um, and then uh, to the um, question of the, say, the platforms and the easy to use um, platforms, um, I think this is very much something that we would need to um, look into which Clarence centers uh, out of the 68 that we currently have would have a kind of natural match with um, or natural interest for, for hosting uh, such a platform. Um, you mentioned, uh, I think it was uh, Christian mentioned the uh, Lapsgrid uh, as an example. Um, as you, you might know, uh, there are several Clarence centers that are involved in that uh, in that project. Uh, there is uh, the center at Tübingen, there's a center at, in Prague. Um, so it might be interesting to look around whether there's some possibility of um, yeah, making use of the expertise and the know-how that is available at those at those uh, centers. Um, yeah, and then finally um, into the uh, choice or provisioning of, um, of easy to use uh, platforms. Um, I think this would also be a matter where we need some kind of, um, yeah, maybe piloting or so, eh, where we, we basically, uh, would uh, yeah, work together trying to set up such an instance and try to see um, also, again, with an interested Clarence Center, because that's a very important take home message. I mean, Clarence is not a top down thing, but we're really bottom up and we, we uh, are heavily relying on the know how and the expertise of our centers in setting up such a platform and looking how it uh, how it works, what we can do with it, how to connect it maybe to other parts of the uh, Clarin infrastructure. Uh, I know that earlier on, we've been uh, looking at uh, platforms like uh, Wikibase and so, which also come with possibilities for Sparkle endpoints and things like that. Um, definitely an interesting path to to explore, but it would be good to, to see what kind of match there could be made with uh, yeah, the know-how and the natural interest of, uh, of Clarence in, the, in this field. So um, maybe we can start with the, um, 
one of the, the earlier questions, which is um, maybe an, a short introduction to the European language grid. Um, I think someone asked this during uh, Penny's presentation. So I don't know, Penny, if you're, uh, if you're willing, maybe you can just give a, a very brief introduction um, to, to, yeah. the, to the European language grid. Yeah, okay, the European language grid uh, is a project that is currently uh, ongoing for two years already. Uh, we have just released a uh, version two of the platform that we have for European language grid. That's a platform for uh, language resources and technologies again, but uh, putting the focus, putting uh, the, the burden on language technologies. Uh, we're interested in language technology services, both commercial and um, both commercial and research uh, technologies, um, which can be um, deployed, integrated in the ELZ grid, and they can run uh, on the ELZ infrastructure. We're also collecting metadata and hosting data resources as well. Um, again, with a view for language technology, not from social sciences and humanities as uh, for um, clarin. Um, with respect to LOD, uh, we're also uh, like looking into, um, into tools and services that uh, use uh, linked data technologies. Uh, we have, uh, uh, there were uh, two calls for open call pro for projects that would uh, populate, either populate the ELG with new technologies or, um, what's the word, or uh, create new technologies with um, existing technologies inside our data sets in uh, the ELG. There's a couple, uh, there is one that uses a Sparkle query. And in that sense, I think that would be a nice experiment to work on and see how it works and get back to it. Uh, we also plan to have uh, from Preterload, this is a collaborating project, also language technologies for the, uh, that will come that, that are linked data where this is work in progress. So this is the first thing that I can say about uh, ALD. There was a question also that I didn't, that came up just a moment ago. Um, regarding ELZ and the metadata scheme. As I said, it reuses uh, the Metasare uh, all ontology and the OMTD ontology. Yes, in that sense, it can be recommended as load and fair aligned metadata schema. I'm not sure if that um, answers the question. Is, is this Philip's question? So it, yeah. it's the second question. So I'll just read it out. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So Sorry. for distributed service providers, in particular smaller ones, it would be useful to have access to standard metadata schemes yeah. and other best practice recommendations on how to implement lot support in their infrastructure. Can the European yeah. language grid metadata scheme be recommended as lot and fair aligned metadata? Um, yes, it, yeah, it can, yes. Yeah, but I mean, it's still being worked, as I said, as a, but it's not just... Okay, this answers the metadata part. I think there's a question also that has to do with best practice recommendations, how to implement load support, which goes beyond metadata. But I'm not sure what I should answer to that. Or if it's, I don't know, if, um, if it was only about metadata concerning this. Um. I don't know. Uh, Philip, do you want to um, yeah. maybe kind of uh, uh, ask, uh, clarify uh, what, what, whether the Penny's answer was, uh, do you want to have any further follow up to uh, Penny's answer? Yeah, sure. I, I think my second question mm -hmm. was about the metadata, and, and mm -hmm. probably my first question was more about the, the data itself. Okay, yeah because there are also other best practices for LOD besides metadata. That's what I, I meant. I don't know if, if there are any questions on that maybe Christian or Hockey can uh, discuss. Mm -hmm. So actually, if I may, mm -hmm. um, for exposing uh, CSV data or spreadsheets as RDF, there are different technologies available. So one such technology is Tarkle, which basically allows you to provide a Sparkle view on uh, CSV data. 
Um, another one is uh, the one that I mentioned um, that allows you to write a wrapper around a relational database, basically. So you can just work with that as tabular data and still have a Sparkle endpoint on that. Uh, maybe uh, in the follow-up of, uh, um, of this call, we can also provide pointers to those standards. Can I comment, sorry, on one of the challenges? Because this is, I think, the second question that you have there. Had. How to find a sustainable hosting solution? I think what is important is not just depositing uh, linked data, as uh, Christian uh, said, but also making sure that they are queryable, not just having an RDF dump. Okay, that's enough, but you have to make sure that it is sustainable. It is already um, it is available for use. Um, so, so as a, we have some points for discussion, but does anyone have any um, uh, voice check? Uh, do you want to maybe make, make your comment? I, I noticed in the chat you've... Uh, yeah, uh, hello. Uh, so I, 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 I think it's a quite interesting question on uh, whether or when LOD is a, is a backend technology. Uh, I agree perfectly that in long term it should be a, a backend technology uh, invisible to the user. But, uh, I think we are still at the, at the, uh, in the period of uh, getting the first uh, adopters for this technology. And I think in this, uh, at this point it's quite important to, uh, to put uh, also these uh, graph structures, uh, integrated graph structures uh, to the front. Uh, uh, I remember uh, 10 years ago I was in, in the major uh, uh, LOD uh, project, uh, LOD2, and uh, there the, one of the most uh, prominent uh, tools uh, which were quite popular was a tool called uh, Sigma, which was a, a link data browser on the top of uh, uh, Syndice Index, some of you may, uh, may remember it. And uh, this is something that really people really like because it allowed them to browse so the data structures going for navigating from one concept to another and uh, seeing what is in the data. And at that time, it was um, largely data extracted from, uh, from Wikipedia and so on. And that was quite, quite messy. And uh, my perception is that uh, linked data resources uh, could be uh, quite well curated and uh, compared to this, uh, this encyclopedia data. And uh, I think it's important uh, both from end users, linguists, and from uh, web, uh, for, for applic uh, linguistic application programmers uh, to first uh, be able to uh, explore the data visually uh, to, and to, to, to really feel, wow, there's a nice amount of uh, data in one place that I couldn't get elsewhere. And only after this, uh, this uh, first experience, people might be willing to invest into learning technologies or of whether Spark building or using Spark endpoints or uh, triple pattern fragments or uh, loading dumps and creating something. Uh, this is just technology, but pe people just have to learn about the wealth of data uh, enabled by this infrastructure. So I think now the front end is quite important before we can just uh, keep uh, link data in the back end and invisible. Does anyone have any responses to, to what Wojtek's point or any other comments on this, on this theme? Uh, if I may. Um... This is perfectly right. So there is data that should be exposed to the user as a graph and where it also makes perfect sense. And I think uh, Marco's examples are a point in case here. Um, on the other hand, uh, we also have um, kinds of data where a linked data representation would eventually be much too verbose to expose people to directly. And in those cases, uh, people often work with existing technologies. Like for example, if you have interlinear gloss text, there's special purpose tools for this. Um, and I don't think that these will be replaced anytime soon. Um, however, they have a massive interoperability problem and uh, this can be addressed by linked data technology. So we work on this excessively actually. And uh, in these use cases, uh, people actually already have their user interface. They just need to, to, to be able to come from one platform into another and linked data might be a way. So you're perfectly right. The other two perspectives, there's data that should be exposed to, to users. Um, at the same time, uh, this backend technology is, uh, is also important. These are just different use cases. I wouldn't actually define it as a backend technology. This is just where I see most potential for growth. 
Yeah, actually, I think uh, even uh, beyond linguistics in, the, in those projects, there was a, a one category of, uh, of uh, linked data which are based on this uh, uh, either encyclopedic or other, let's say, largely graph structured resources, which uh, which were the first category. And, and they also, for, for example, government data sets, which were really too verbose and too large to be browsed, uh, uh, to be put to the front. And there, the question was really to integrate uh, them together with some, some glue. Yeah. So I think that's still the same story. Uh, does anyone else have any, any comments on this one? Uh, the, the issue of verbosity uh, and uh, whether LOD is essentially a back end technology or whether it's, all, it's both, it's a, it can be both, both a, a back end technology as well as, as I think, as, as Mark has shown very uh, with, with, with his work, that actually seeing, viewing these, these graph structures can actually be very, uh, very, very useful as well. So I think the only thing that really should not happen is that any tool requires people to acquire uh, a substantial background in Sparkle in order to be able to work with that, because this this just won't happen. So we need to have some level of abstraction before that. Um, I, I, so I'd like to move on to some of the other points of discussion. So. Um, I think the, the points that Jorge and Christian made are, are very, very interesting. So uh, I, I've kind of uh, set them out uh, as the second, third, and fourth points. So, um, so the the idea of how to find a, a sustainable hosting solution, um, also this idea of the, there being a, a kind of a balance of burden between data provider, consumer, and host, and also the the, the need for bridge technologies. I think all of these are kind of very important questions. That I think. Dieter's responses were also kind of very illuminating. Um, so um, maybe I, we can open up some discussion on these on this kind of uh, these these three questions. Um, does does anyone um, in the audience have any any comments or any questions or any anything they'd like to clear up? Let's uh, ask a question. Um, sure. Um, yeah, maybe on the. I mean, it's it's just thinking a lot here. But um, so we've been discussing the obvious need for, um, say, infrastructural computing resources, say, to to have uh, Sparkle endpoints and things like that. In um, how far would it make sense to look into setting up such? generic pieces of um, of services uh, beyond the um, language data community. Uh, I could imagine that uh, the bioinformaticians have similar issues. Um, would there be um, advantages or disadvantages for setting up such um, services uh, in, in a common way so that several communities could make use of it? Thinking of the EOSC, for instance, just uh, shouting out some uh, some buzzwords here. I think in general, it would only have advantages, in particular, if it allows to build large scale infrastructures with some load balancing across different communities. Mm -hmm. um, the only point where this technology is specific is in the front ends, but those have don't have to be uh, integrated into those general data uh, publishing services. And there might be some opportunities with uh, some of the future um, calls that will be made under the EOSC future projects um, to have kind of a specific application for setting up such um, uh, such an endpoint, for instance, and it might have some additional value if, if uh, yeah, heterogeneous communities would basically propose such a thing together, They're trying to see uh, what could be done there. And um, yeah, I think that there might be some possibilities for, uh, for, for such a... Um, yeah, hosting such a service or setting up such a service. On the I, I, I agree that this is not um, a problem or, or an issue. Some of the set of issues we, we presented are not only uh, suffered by the linguistic community or the language technologies community, but uh, for the linked data community at a large scale. So maybe talking, thinking on, on representation needs or front ends or whatever, we can go for more specific things for linguistics, but for uh, hosting services, infrastructure services, this is a, um, yeah, you're completely right. This is a problem shared by other communities, uh, environmental science, uh, biology, uh, social science, anything. 
that uh, needs to host uh, linked data, semantic data in general. I would add also the cultural heritage community that uh, is uh, using uh, more and more this type of technologies, by the way. Um, I, I would also say that uh, um, I think Dieter mentioned, mentioned DEOSC, and I think also Christian, uh, I think you put it well in, during your presentation that actually FAIR seems to rely almost on linked data, or it seems to assume linked data. And I think I think as, as time goes on, uh, linked data, I mean, will become more and more um, important as a means of publishing, uh, not just a, a, as, you, as you guys pointed, not just language resource data, but all kinds of data. But uh, I, I think that the, the important point is that where maybe it's more kind of specific to um, issues that are more specific to maybe linguistics relate to come, maybe coming together and trying to, to kind of come up with common vocabularies for um, for the, the, the domain of linguistics. And I, I think uh, Jocelyn also, also brought up that uh, there, there's an issue maybe that we have in, in, in linguistics or in working with, with the linguistic data that maybe they don't have in, in biological, um, biomedical data sets or in other kinds of data sets where you have lots of competing theories and, uh, and these competing theories aren't necessarily kind of, it, it, you see, you have, you have different ideas of what what is a, a, a part of speech, or or what consists, uh, what um, how to represent phonetic information, uh, syntactic information, and the the point is that I think one of the main challenges is maybe is trying to get these different communities, these different kind of points of view, theoretical points of view, to, to talk together in order to to be able to to make kind of these different language resources also. Um, also, be more more compatible one with one with another, um, and I think what I think maybe one of the things that, that not just Claren but also in this case maybe also Daria as well can do is, is to help to bring together these communities and also to to kind of um, work with projects such as Pretalod and also uh, Nexus Linguarum and also Elexis as well, and and to try and also maybe another thing is to try and maybe ensure sustainability for for some of the, the community initiatives after these projects end. Um, and I think that this is, so it's not just necessarily just the technical aspect, but it's also maybe the kind of the, the kind of social aspect or the, the kind of the kind of bringing together of, 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 of a community to, to work on these things, to work on a common vocabulary or to work on different different challenges which um, we face maybe as, more specifically as a, a, a kind of a, as a community which works with language uh, resources and also in the field of, of SSH. If I may comment on that, Fahad? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay, to me, uh, uh, if by common vocabulary we mean bringing together all these communities and um, each of them uh, somehow describing their own concepts and terms and then bringing links between them. I absolutely agree. There's no way we can persuade people coming from different theories, different backgrounds, etc. use the same and one concept. But I think that's the brilliant thing about linked data is that we can have relations between these concepts and terms in a common consolidated vocabulary. And uh, yes, and I absolutely agree. The, the point is to try and bring people together. So I think an, an yeah. event like this is a, it's a very kind of, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a great start maybe to try and have a, a wider discussion outside of maybe specific projects mm -hmm. and specific maybe initiatives. I'm, yeah, I'm just thinking instead of saying common vocabulary, saying something like consolidated vocabulary or something like saying, bringing all these vocabularies together in one place where they are described and where we have links between these concepts. I actually think this was the vision of the uh, RELCAT part yep. Yep. of the ISOCAT. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, there might be a story why we don't have that right now. Um, but um, the technology doesn't require everything to be bundled at one place. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe a first, a good first step would be to have something like like a dedicated workshop on that, um, and then um, maybe to see how to to create links between different vocabularies maintained by different communities. I mean, uh, we we tried to have that in, uh, with the ontologies of linguistic annotation. 
Um, and it kind of worked, but it's not extremely widely adopted. And I think um, uh, the people uh, involved in the typological database system had a similar solution for their local in-house databases that they linked. Um, so the technology doesn't really require to have this bundled, mm -hmm. but it would allow it. There's an interesting point by Francisca de Jong, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to expand on this, Francisca. Yeah, hello. Uh, need to go to a better place. Um, yeah, in general, Clarin has uh, uh, budgets available for um, uh, supporting workshop ideas. Um, and definitely <laughs> we have a bit of a reserve uh, built up during the COVID uh, pandemic. So um, uh, get in touch uh, um, to learn about how we would like you to propose something like this, because uh, the, the in principle, we work with a model for expression of interest for workshops nowadays. Um, so if, if you tell us what you would like to do, uh, then we can make sure that this is uh, properly uh, announced and, 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 and quickly processed. That definitely sounds good to me. I mean, I think that there's been a lot of interest in this event as well. And uh, True. Yeah. So I think we, we should maybe try and continue the momentum as well. Um, does, does anyone else have, um, so for instance, uh, maybe we can discuss uh, a workshop where we can also discuss maybe metadata I mean, and, and the, not just a workshop, but maybe also kind of like a, a tutorial. I, I think that's the point of so maybe also helping people to kind of um, uh, giving an introduction to, to the use of, of these different vocabularies uh, in, as, in, in the context of linked data as well, um, especially CCR. Um, I think that would be nice as well, not just a, a workshop, but also maybe a tutorial, maybe a, a, as a collaboration between Nexus and... and, and well, th this would be an easy step because you can produce that without meeting uh, or, or maybe only meeting within a small group. And uh, there's also funding for producing a training material. So if you would uh, come with a good plan for a, a tutorial, uh, that is not uh, taking a controversial uh, perspective, but something that is widely um, agreed to, uh, or that includes a proper uh, uh, description of, of things that are not commonly uh, shared, but uh, well, where the opposition is commonly understood. That's all fine. Good proposals are very welcome. That's, uh, the, uh, again, the message. Well, if I can, Fad, uh, well, sure. in my experience with Lila, tutorials and activities are much appreciated both by, by people who are not fully familiar with uh, linguistic link data because they see linguistic link data in action, they can run queries, they see edges and know it's really uh, really linked to edges, uh, nodes are really linked to each other by edges, but it's also helpful for us, for the community, to discuss uh, problems uh, in practice, looking at the problems that we every day uh, address while modeling different resources that we want to link. So uh, I, I support this idea fully. Thank you. Actually, uh, one of the missions of, of uh, Nexus Linguarum is to organize periodic um, works, um, data thons and, and training schools on linguistic link data and different aspects. We had a, our first one was an online one in January. <clears throat> Actually, I think the materials are online, not the recording, so. But maybe for later um, iterations of these schools, we can disseminate also to not only to Nexus, but to Clarin and other communities. Um, I think our time is, uh, is up, so um, time for discussion at least. So um, I think I'll hand over to, to Dieter for the, the closing uh, slides. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, so um, little... Um, information on uh, how to stay updated about uh, events like uh, like this. Um, well, first of all, very important point is uh, making sure that you're subscribed to our uh, news flash, it's a monthly newsletter. Um, 
We also have an events page on the website and relatively soon we will also set up um, a subscription mechanism to be informed about Clarin Cafes and other of virtual events as soon as possible. Uh, so even quicker than uh, when you would get the information through uh, the news uh, flash. We will also announce that on the website. Um, Francisca already mentioned it. We have lots of uh, um, calls uh, um, open for um, so funding opportunities. Please take a look at our website. There's a big uh, menu item funding and you can read every, uh, yeah, everything uh, over there. Um, more information, well, at uh, Twitter, you probably found us uh, that way. And um, there's also something on the, um, yeah, the updates for the next uh, Claren Cafes. And there's an announcement there on the next slide. That's that at the end of May, 31st of May, same time slot as today, between two and four, there will be a cafe on the topic of Clarin and multilinguality, uh, which is absolutely uh, also a thrilling subject, uh, I, uh, I think. Uh, but more information about that will also be soon provided on the website in the news flash and through the other media that have been mentioned. And I think that brings us to the end of today's cafe. Um, let me thank all speakers, especially the, the organizers of today's uh, session, everyone who contributed to the lively discussion. And uh, then I hope to all see you back at some uh, next uh, cafe or virtual event or in some far future, maybe a face-to-face -face event. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, yeah, contributions. <laughs>